The first one asks us to determine any equivalent expressions to the given polynomial. So the first one, very wrong. Okay, you cannot just add all of these together. That is not mathematically legal. You can only add together like terms. B, so let's go ahead and check. Is there something equivalent to 6x to the fifth? And no. Okay, the highest degree here is an x to the fourth polynomial. So this one is bad. So let's check C. Do we have a 6x to the fourth? Yes. Something equivalent to plus 4x to the third? Yes. Minus 7x squared? Yes. Positive 5x squared? Yes. And 8? Yes. So this is actually the exact same expression, which is also equivalent. Next one, okay, starts with the 8. So do we have a positive 8? Yes. Do we have a positive 5x? Yes. Do we have a positive 7x squared? No, because this is negative 7x squared. So D is bad. So E, we already checked the 8 and the positive 5x. Okay, now we have a negative 7x. That's good. Positive 4x? Yes. Positive 6x to the 4th? Yes. So E is equivalent. Number two, each year a certain amount of money is deposited into an account which pays an annual interest rate of R so that at the end of the year, the balance in the account is multiplied by the growth factor of X. So we're going to call the growth factor X. It's just one plus the rate, one being 100% of your original deposit plus the extra um, interest rate. So this one says, um, that we had $500 deposited into the account initially, okay, at the start of the first year. Then we're going to have $200 deposited the next year. And then we're going to have $600 deposited um, the start of the following year. So we want to write an expression for the value of the count at the end of three years in terms of the growth factor. So we have this initial $500, and this is after three years. So this $500 got deposited in the very first year. So this one has been in there for three years, meaning it has been multiplied by the growth factor three times. So 500 times the growth factor cubed, okay, for this first part. Then we go ahead and put $200 into the account the next year. This $200 has been in the account then for two years. So this is going to have the growth factor multiplied by it twice. So X to the second. And then we added in $600 in the very last year. So that has grown one time by the growth rate. So just X to the first. So then what is the amount to the nearest cent in the account at the end of three years if the interest rate is 2%? So remember, X is the growth factor, which is 1 plus the rate or the interest rate. So remember that the interest rate needs to be put as a decimal into this equation. So 2% as a decimal is 0.02. So this is our growth factor. When we simplify it by adding those together, we get 1.02. So here's our growth factor. So we'll just plug it in um, for X here. So we're going to do this growth factor of 1.02 cubed. So we're going to do 500 times 1.02 cubed plus we're going to do 200 times that growth factor twice, so 1.02 squared, and then plus 600 times that growth factor of 1.02. So now when you type this in your calculator, just type it in just like this with these parentheses. Okay, be sure that you don't just do 500 times 1.02 and then hit cubed. You want to make sure that you're just cubing this 1.02, okay? And if you type that into um, 
your calculator correctly, you are going to get an answer of um, 1,350.68. So there's going to be $1,300, $1,350 in the account at the end of three years. Number three, consider this polynomial function, evaluate it for x equals negative 2. So we um, are going to plug in negative 2 into this function. So we're going to evaluate the function. So I'm just going to write down the function, but in place of the x's, I'm going to put parentheses. So I'm going to do 5 times um, x cubed, but I'm going to leave the x out of there. I'm just going to do parentheses. 8 times x squared minus 3 times x plus 1. And so everywhere there was an x, now we're plugging in negative 2. And so you can type that in your calculator. I'm going to um, calculate it on the screen for you. So we're going to do 5 times and then negative 2 to the third power. Okay, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative, then times negative 2 again would be negative 8. And 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. Okay, then here we'll have 8 times and negative 2 squared. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 8 times 4 is plus 32. Um, and then we've got negative 3 times negative 2 is plus 6. And then we have this plus 1. So negative 40 plus 32 is negative 8 plus um, 6 plus 1, so negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. So f of negative 2 equals negative 1. Number 4, an open top box is formed by cutting squares from a 5 by 7 inch piece of paper and then folding the sides up. The volume in cubic inches of this type of open box um, is a function of the side length x in inches of the square cutout, and it can be given by this formula. Rewrite this expression by expanding the polynomial. So you actually don't even need to, like, know anything from up here because they're giving you the volume equation here. And all you're needing to do is expand it. So all you really need to focus in on is this. And now expand it means multiply it out. Okay, so we're going to have to multiply these um, factors together. So you've got a couple of different ways that you've maybe learned how to multiply. So I'm going to do two of them. Okay, so I'm going to do two different ways. So the first one is I'm just going to distribute... Okay, this 7 times each piece. So 7 times 5 is 35. And then 7 times negative 2 is negative 14x. So 7 times negative 2x. Then I'm going to distribute this negative 2 to each. So negative 2 times 5 is negative 10x. And then negative 2x times negative 2x is plus 4x. Okay, so that's when you just multiply these first two binomials. Okay, so I'm still going to leave this in parentheses because I still have this times x I haven't dealt with yet. So within these parentheses, okay, you've got these like terms here. So inside of, so let me just simplify inside of here. So we've got this 35, we've got minus 24x. Oops, and then I missed the squared here. So this was supposed to say 4x squared. Um, so adding those two like terms together, and then we have the plus 4x squared. Then we just have to multiply um, this x in. So now we're going to distribute the x into all of these. So you're going to get 35x minus 24x squared plus 4x cubed, okay? So then there's your expanded um, version of the volume function. So we'll just put equals to v of x. So that's one way you might have learned to multiply is by double distributing, or sometimes people call it the FOIL method. 
another way um, is if we're multiplying these binomials together, okay, we can do a two by two square here to help us organize. Okay, so we're going to multiply a binomial times a binomial. So we need a two by two box. So we're going to put this seven and the negative two X on the side. And then we're going to put five and negative two X here. So then we multiply the numbers, okay, that lead into this box. So seven times five is 35. For this box, we're going to do seven times negative two X, which is negative 14 X. For this box, we're going to do the five times the negative two X, which is negative 10 X. And then for this final box, we'll do negative 2x times negative 2x, which is 4x squared. So then you'll see these like terms here. So we can take this polynomial out. We've got 35. Negative 10 and negative 14x is negative 24x. And then we've got this 4x squared. Now that was just for these binomials. So we still have to multiply everything by x. Okay, but you'll notice that this and this are the same. Okay, so you get the same answer. It's just a different way of organizing. So then we'll multiply this x in. So then we'd get 35x minus 24x squared plus 4x cubed. Okay, so again, you get the same answer, just two different ways of looking at it. Number five, we have a rectangular playground space is to be fenced in using the wall of a daycare um, for one side and 200 meeting, meters of fencing for the other. So I'm going to just draw this daycare. So here's our daycare building. And then we're going to draw a rectangular um, playground space. Okay, so using the daycare as one of the sides. So we're going to have something like this that butts up to that daycare. Then it says the area in square meters of the playground. Okay, so the area of this um, is, is a function of the length x in meters of each of the sides. Okay, so now we need to kind of label the sides. Well, we don't know how much they're going to be, but let's call this side x. If this is x, so is this, since it's a rectangle and those opposite sides are congruent. So now we can write an expression for this length, okay, because this side length here is just the leftover fence after we've already used some up. So how much fencing did we start with? So we started with 200 meters of fence, and now we've already used up a length of 2x because we used an x here and a length of x here. So this side is equal to 200 minus 2x. So then our area formula would multiply length times width. So we're going to multiply x times 200 minus x. That's going to give us the area of that rectangle. Um, so that's down here for the expression. So here, this first one is asking us if we used 50. Okay, so if this was 50 then this would be 50. So we've used up 100 out of the 200. So that would leave 100 left over for this side. So we would be doing 50 times 100, which gives us 5,000 meters squared. Then we have that expression. And then what's a reasonable domain? So you wouldn't want this to drop below zero. Okay, so we're going to cut 200 in half because we're going to subtract two x's off of here. So if we did 200 minus 200, okay, so then the x would be equal to 100 since we've got two of them here. So the reasonable domain here would be to have fence length that's greater than zero, okay, but less than 100 because we don't want to end up with a negative number or no side length over here of zero. Number six, Tyler finds an expression for V of X that gives the volume of an open top box in cubic inches in terms of the length of, which we'll call X, in inches of the square cutout. So if we start with this rectangle, then we're going to cut out these squares in the corner. 
Okay, and x is going to be the length of the square cutouts. And then we would fold the sides of this box up. So this is the graph that Tyler gets if he allows x to take on a value anywhere between 1 and 7. So what would be a more appropriate domain for Tyler to have used? So you want to think about this in context. So remember that um, this amount here, okay, this vertical amount, this is the volume of that box. So when we're thinking about volume, okay, it doesn't make sense for our volume to go below zero, and that's what this line is. So we do not want our volume to dip below zero. You can't have a volume of a negative number. So we wouldn't have any of this. So this, oops. So this part right here would be bad, and this part right here, so anything after this would be bad, including all the way through here, okay? Because you just can't dip below zero. So anything after that would be bad. So a more appropriate domain would be starting at x equals 0 and going up to this x value, which looks to be approximately 3.5. Then what is the approximate maximum value of the volume? So maximum value is going to be the height or the top height. And if we look over here, just guess a number, okay? Approximate a number that's more than 50. Okay, less than 60, but this one looks to be closer to 50, so maybe I'll say about 52. 